General Comprehensive Operating System GCOS, originally GECOS, General Electric Comprehensive Operating Supervisor is a family of operating systems oriented toward the 36-bit GE, Honeywell mainframe computers. The original version of GCOS was developed by General Electric from 1962. The operating system is still used today in its most recent versions GCOS 7 and GCOS 8 on servers and mainframes produced by Group Bull, primarily through emulation, to provide continuity with legacy mainframe environments. Note that GCOS 7 and GCOS 8 are separate branches of the operating system and continue to be developed alongside each other. Topic: History. The GECOS2 operating system was developed by General Electric for the 36-bit GE 635 in 1962 to 1964. It bore a close resemblance architecturally to IBS YS on the IBM 7094 and less to DOS 360 on the System 360. However, the GE 635 architecture was very different from the IBM System 360 and GECOS was more ambitious than DOS 360. GECOS 2 supported both time sharing TSS and batch processing with dynamic allocation of memory. IBM had fixed partitions at that time, making it a true second generation operating system. After Honeywell acquired GE's computer division, GECOS 3 was renamed GECOS 3 as part of the 24 bits GE 400 series, and the hardware line was renamed to the H6000, adding the EIS enhanced instruction set character or oriented instead of word oriented later honeywell marketing created a series 60 and renamed the h6000 to the level 66 later on dps8 honeywell along with its european affiliate cii honeywell bull launched a new 32 bit product line called level 64 which later became the dps7 the name gcos was extended to the operating systems for all Honeywell marketed product lines. GCOS 64, a completely different 32-bit operating system for the Level 64 series, similar to a parallel development called Multix, was designed by Honeywell and Honeywell Bull developers in France and Boston. GCOS 62, the operating system for another 32-bit low-end line of machines, the Level 62 series, was designed in Italy. GCOS 61 was the operating system for a new version of a small system made in France, Model 58, later Level 61/58, and the operating system for a new 16-bit minicomputer line from Massachusetts, Billerica, the Level 6, got the name GCOS 6. Another renaming of the hardware product lines occurred in 1979, with the Level 6 becoming the DPS-6, the Level 62 becoming the DPS-4, the Level 64 becoming DPS-7, and Level 66 becoming DPS-8. Operating systems retained the GCOS brand name, with GCOS 6, GCOS 4, GCOS 7, and GCOS 8 being introduced. GCOS 8 was an extensive rewrite of GCOS 3, with changes made to support true virtual memory management and demand paging. These changes also required new hardware. GCOS 3 was supported in maintenance for several years after this announcement and renaming. GCOS 3 and later GCOS 7 and GCOS 8 featured a good codicil, relational database called Integrated Data Store IDS, that was the model for the more successful IDMS. Several transaction processing monitors were designed for GCOS 3 and GCOS 8. An early attempt at TP for GCOS 3, the transaction processing executive, assumed that, as in Unix, a new process should be started to handle each transaction, and enjoyed only very limited success. Another TP system, the Transaction Driven System TDS, was soon developed for GCOS 3, using a single process potentially with multiple threads to service all transactions. TDS was essentially a Honeywell development. 
It was later replaced by the Backward Compatible Transaction Processing 8 TP8 on GCOS 8, which profited from the overhaul in GCOS system architecture that came with GCOS 8 to make full use of virtual memory concepts. TP8 used multiple static processes in a way similar to Unix daemons to handle incoming transactions in a multiplexed way. TDS and its TP8 successor were commercially successful, and TDS predated IBM CICS, which had a very similar architecture. A similar product also called TDS was developed for GCOS 7, but the internal architecture was completely different. DPS6 and DPS4 X level 62 were superseded by Motorola 68000 and later on PoRPC minicomputers running Unix and the product lines were discontinued, though GCOS6 ran in an emulator on top of X. The DPS7 line, along with GCOS7, continued to evolve into the DPS7000 hardware base. In the late 1980s Honeywell sold its computer business to a joint venture that initially included NEC and Bull, with Honeywell still holding a stake for a time. Over a couple of years, Bull took over the company. NEC supplied several generations of mainframe hardware at the high end, which would run both GCOS 8 and their own ACOS 4 operating system. Bull used the nomenclature DPS 9000 for its entire GCOS 8 based mainframe line, which included models designed by both Bull and NEC. By the late 1990s and early 2000s, Bull's desire was to center its development on a single hardware base, running commodity Intel chips but with Bull value adds. This platform, called Novascale and based on Itanium 2 processors, runs both Windows and Linux natively. However, instruction set simulators for both the DPS 7000 and DPS 9000 allowed GCOS 7 and GCOS 8 to run on this platform. GCOS 7 has also been ported to a lower end Xeon based platform, while Bull has publicly stated that GCOS 8 will continue to be developed for Itanium systems. Bull continues to invest development money in support of both GCOS 7 and GCOS 8, and still has customers in countries around the world. Support for GCOS 7 and GCOS 8 from Bull is planned through at least 2025 including regular hardware and software upgrades. A trace of GCOS influence remains today in modern Unix systems. Some early Unix systems at Bell Labs used GCOS machines for print spooling and various other services. The field added to etc. pass WD to carry GCOS ID information was called the GECOS field and survives today as the PW underscore geckos member used for the user's full name and other human ID information. Due to its historically important and far-reaching influence, GCOS is sometimes known as the king of operating systems. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> System architecture and concepts. GCOS is a multi-threading, multi-programming operating system originally oriented towards batch processing, although later versions incorporated enhancements for time-sharing and online transaction processing environments. Systems running GCOS today use it mainly for batch and OLTP, or as a back-end enterprise server. Although GCOS has a basic architecture similar to that of the IBM 360 and earlier IBM 7090 series, which was abandoned by IBM for the 360, and subsequent operating systems with which it competed, it was also heavily influenced by projects such as MEDINET, Multics, and WWMCCS, and has inherited a strong security structure in consequence. Hardware and software features combined to render the operating system unusually secure for an operating system of its generation and class. Multics influenced the design of the hardware, with gate-oriented secure transfer of control instructions and a hardware-enforced system of security levels very similar to that of the famous Multics rings. 
Operational environments such as WWMCCS drove development of special security features to allow secure hosting of classified information and compartmentalization. For a time separate versions of the GCOS system with special security features turned on were maintained specifically for government customers. GCOS is a process-oriented OS, in which each process hosts one or more execution threads and executes in its own virtual memory space. Virtual memory is divided into segments of arbitrary size reminiscent of Multics segments, and a second level of address translation converts pure virtual addresses to padgeable addresses, which are then converted to real addresses in main memory or backing store. Segments and pages and other constructs include hardware and forced security parameters. The top-level virtual memory architecture also simplifies sharing of code and data in a secure fashion, again in a way reminiscent of Multics. GCOS requires specific hardware designed for the operating system, although the most recent machines capable of running the OS do so through emulation. The hardware originally had much in common with Multics hardware, so much so that some mainframe equipment could be switched from GCOS mode to Multics mode with the turn of a dial. Much of the peripheral equipment used with GCOS shared a great deal with Multics, although front end network processes were very different between the two systems. Program languages available for GCOS included GCOS Algol, Algol 68, COBOL, SNOBOL, Jovial, APL, Fortran 68, Coral 66, Fortran 77, and B. Topic: <laughs> GCOS 8 storage units. We have become accustomed to an almost universal terminology for units of storage. Modern terminology applies across various operating systems and computer vendors, and is part of everyday conversation. Terms like megabyte and gigabyte mean much the same to everyone, and terms like mabibyte and gibibyte have been formally standardized. However, the GCOS 8 system pre dates this monoculture with some colorful units of its own, as follows. Note that in this system a byte contains 9 bits with values ranging from 000 to 777 8 or 0 to 511, unlike the usual 8-bit bytes with values ranging from 0 16 to FF 16 or 0 to 255. This is due to the 36-bit CPU architecture. Permanent file sizes were specified in links 1280 bytes. Temporary file sizes were specified in links 15360 bytes. Since the early 1970s, all GCOS3 and GCOS8 disk drives used logical block addressing LBA. Topic: See also Timeline of operating systems Mainframe computer Advanced Comprehensive Operating System Gecko's field, typically used to record general information about user accounts on Unix-like operating systems. <laughs>